Welcome to Get Programming, Learn to Code with Python. I'm Anna Bell, and I will be your instructor for this course. This video serves as an introduction to the course and will motivate you by answering the question, why should you learn to program? Think about all of the skills that you've learned so far in your life. These are things like reading, writing, doing math, and even cooking. Your life has significantly improved with a little bit of knowledge in each of these subjects. If you know how to read and write, you can communicate with others. If you know how to do basic calculations, you can tip appropriately at a restaurant. If you know how to follow a recipe, you can make a meal in a pinch. Knowing even a little bit of programming will enable you to avoid having to rely on others to help you. And you can finish tasks that you might want to do in a very specific way more efficiently. If you learn to program, your skill can be used as you effectively build your own personal toolbox of utilities. The more you try to integrate programming into your daily life, the more you can solve personal tasks more efficiently. Computers are great at doing math. If you're a student preparing for the SATs and you need to make sure that you're solving the quadratic equation correctly, you can write a program that takes in the missing parameters and solves the equation for you, so that when you do it by hand, you can be sure that the calculations were done correctly. If you recently went on vacation and downloaded a lot of pictures, the names given by the camera are often not very descriptive. So instead of manually renaming everything by hand for potentially thousands of pictures, you could write a short program that renames all of your files automatically for you. If you keep track of checks that you write in a paper logbook, you might consider typing them in a file and writing a program that reads the file and organizes the information. You can calculate sums, separate the checks by date ranges, or whatever else you might want to do. Lastly, suppose that you're a teacher and you want to send a personalized email to each student with their grade for a test. Instead of copying and pasting text and filling in the values manually, you could write a program that reads the student's name, email address, and score from a file, and then effectively fills in the blank automatically for each student and sends out the email. These are just a few situations in which programming can help you be more organized and self-reliant. This video course assumes that you've never programmed before. Having said that, you really should be familiar with the following things. The first is understanding a variable. If you took a math course that covers introductory algebra, you should know what a variable is. In future videos, you'll see how variables in a programming setting are different than variables in the math setting. You should understand true-false statements. You can think of these statements as sentences that can be determined as true or false. These statements are equivalent to answering yes or no for a particular question. The next thing you should be familiar with is how to make decisions. When you have multiple statements, you can make decisions based on whether one statement is true or false. If something happens, then do something else. The last thing that you should be familiar with are flowcharts. Now it's okay if you don't know what a flowchart is exactly, but examples of when you followed a flowchart before are if you've ever played a game of 21 questions, or if you've ever followed a recipe, or if you've ever read a choose your own adventure book. After watching this video course, you'll know the basics of Python. The basic concepts that you learn can be applied to any programming language. You're going to learn things like how to use variables, expressions, and statements in programming. You're going to get the programs to make decisions for you based on certain conditions. You're going to have the program automatically repeat tasks under some conditions. You're going to be reusing operations that are built into the Python language to help you be more efficient and you're going to be writing your own code that you can reuse later in other programs that you might write. Lastly, you're going to be learning about data structures and knowing about which data structure is appropriate to use in a different situation. Briefly, a data structure is a type of object that stores information in a particular type of format. In this video course, we're going to be using the Python programming language version 3. Specifically, we're going to be using version 3.6, which is the latest version at the time of this recording. Any knowledge that you gain about programming concepts will be easily translatable to any other programming language, so the basics are going to be the same between different languages. I'm going to draw a parallel between Python and English just to show you how they're very similar. In Python, you're going to be learning about the syntax of a language. In English, this is equivalent to how to form sentences. In Python, you're going to be writing more complex code with different blocks of code working together. In English, this is equivalent to using sentences to write a short story. In Python, you're going to be learning how to use code that other people wrote. In English, this is equivalent to referencing someone else's work, so you don't have to rewrite it. 
You'll also be checking that your code works in Python. So how do you check that the program you wrote is correct and that the objective is achieved? This is including things like testing and debugging your code. In English, this is equivalent to checking for spelling and grammar errors and making sure that the story flows together. Lastly, you'll be writing visual programs where the user interacts with the program using a keyboard and the mouse. In English, this is equivalent to writing a picture book. With Python and programming in general, lots of practice is truly essential to understand the concepts. It's especially true if you've never programmed before. As you're writing your programs and following along with the exercises and the code presented in these videos, make sure you type everything out instead of relying on copy and paste. Typing everything out will force programming to become second nature quicker. I'd like to say a quick word about the difference between programming and computer science. And I'm going to draw a parallel between these two with, with an author of fiction and a journalist. An author of fiction comes up with the plot, characters, dialogue, and interactions, and puts different ideas together in interesting ways using the rules of the English language. The author writes stories for people to enjoy. The journalist doesn't need to employ their creative side as much. A journalist hunts down information and puts facts down on paper. We can draw a similar parallel between a computer scientist and a programmer. Both a computer scientist and a programmer know how to write computer code, and both adhere to the rules of the programming language in order to write programs that do certain tasks. An author came up with a story and thought about how to best pace it. Similarly, a computer scientist might put more effort into coming up with ideas rather than how to implement their ideas into code. A computer scientist might think about different algorithms and studies more theoretical questions such as what can a computer can and can't do. On the other hand, a programmer writes code based on pre-existing algorithms and writes code that adheres to strict requirements. A programmer knows the details of the language very well. They know how to code very well. They know how to write code quickly, efficiently, and correctly. In practice, the roles of a computer scientist and programmer often overlap. These videos will show you how to implement tasks on a computer by giving the computer detailed instructions and will help you become proficient at doing this. In this video, I really just wanted to inspire you to learn to program. You don't have to become a professional programmer. You can use basic programming ideas and concepts to improve your personal life, even in simple ways. Programming is a skill and you're going to get better at it the more you practice. As you watch these videos, really try to think of some tedious tasks in your life that you're doing manually that can be solved more effectively using programming. And try to write a program that helps you do these tasks more efficiently. As we begin, I hope that you'll enjoy learning to program with me as you watch these videos.